Hello everyone, welcome back to this 10th tutorial on the topic of statistical analysis in Python. And uh, within this series, we are actually focused on correlation analysis, which is a mini series. And this is the part four or the last part of this correlation analysis. The first three parts, uh, again, I seriously hope uh, you watch those. If not, maybe you should just go ahead and watch them now. And since you're doing that anyway, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And while you're there, find the little thanks button if you're uh, feeling extra generous. So in the first part of this correlation analysis, we looked at Pearson and Spearman's correlation, which is the straightforward. So that's the most important part. Uh, and the second part, we looked at uh, partial correlation topic where we may have a third variable that's probably confounding the relationship between the two other variables where we think that oh we have a relationship or correlation between these two but in reality there is a confounding variable uh, so that's the second one and in the last tutorial we looked at advanced correlation topic where we added some confidence intervals for example and we did some bootstrap uh, you know, by random sampling, we kind of uh, added some confidence intervals to our uh, to our uh, correlation values. So uh, again, please go ahead and watch that. And today, let's uh, finish this off. Uh, hopefully, a shorter video by discussing correlation versus causation. I say discussing, not going through statistical tests. When I say discussion, of course, there is some code involved, but uh, primarily, this is. Uh, uh, you know, uh, at a high level talking about, you know, you being aware of correlation versus causation. Okay, let's jump into our co collab notebook where I added some notes and go through the notes and run a couple of uh, blocks of code and make sure you understand what we mean by correlation and causation, okay? And I will share this uh, notebook with you. The link is down below under description. And uh, here I should probably change this part seven to part 10. Uh, I'll update that before sharing my, uh, my code. But this is uh, where we have been discussing about correlation versus causation, versus causation. Now, what do we mean by that? You probably heard correlation does not imply causation in many, many uh, formats, like when you're discussing, brainstorming with your, with your team, for example, you know. Uh, this often comes up. Correlation doesn't mean causation. And this is this is literally the most quoted phrase in statistics, but uh, most of the time we don't seriously consider, you know, the, the relationship right there. So, of course, why does it matter? I mean, if you look at studies, uh, for example, we can say studies show that ice cream sales are correlated with crime rates. How are ice cream sales uh, correlated with crime rates? Well, maybe because ice cream sales are, you know, you have, uh, you know, they go up in summer and in summer there is a lot more daylight, uh, I should say, and uh, probably there is more crime. I don't know. That's just made up. Okay. So the days are longer and, uh, you know, maybe the crime rate is high. So maybe it's just, uh, or the temperature is good. You know, people are out there. Uh, so the crime probably is up. So either way, does that mean correlation? I mean, one thing caused the other? Probably not. And you probably hear taller people earn more money or social media use is linked to depression or countries with more storks have higher birth rates. Uh, any of these, the question here is, which of these are genuine causal relationships? One caused the other. And which are actually misleading correlations? So this is very important because in science, misinterpreting these correlations and causation obviously leads to, first of all, damaging your reputation, but wasted research funding on false leads and ineffective treatments, poor decisions, and uh, again, depends on, on, on your specific focus area. At the end of the day, I think it, it, it comes back to a lot of wasted time, money, and definitely damaging your reputation. So uh, definitely need to be aware of these. And the golden rule is no matter how strong the correlation appears, it never, never automatically implies causation. Yeah. So uh, let's go ahead and import some libraries and then keep uh, this discussion going. This is a, a brand new file, not dependent on the last uh, three tutorials. And the only library 
uh, st stats related library I'm importing here is Pearson, uh, I mean SciPy to perform to get the Pearson uh, R value. Otherwise, it's just standard ones. Now, let's look at three scenarios before jumping into our Penguin dataset that we have been looking at in the last three videos. Uh, first, let's synthesize some data, simulate some data where we look at a confounding variable, like for example, ice cream uh, and drowning. Okay, so is there a correlation right there? Or is there a third variable, obviously temperature, that's influencing both? And the next one is bi-directional causation, exercise and happiness. I mean, does exercise cause happiness or are you happy uh, or are you ex exercising because you're happy? That's a tough one to prove, right? I mean, these ones uh, and coincidental correlation like some random walks, you know, sometimes you have some spurious correlations. You know, you look at time series. It looks like two things are correlated, but maybe they're completely independent. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, demonstrate those spurious correlations. And uh, the way I'm synthesizing, of course, ice cream sales is a function of temperature. So I added some equation there, it's up to you. Uh, drowning death, of course, is also uh, a function of temperature. You have more people going to the beaches, swimming pools, uh, you know, in summer or when the temperature is nice outside, which means the probability of drowning goes up as you have more people. So it's a function of temperature. Same with ice cream sales, yeah? And now if you look at drowning deaths, uh, it may seem like uh, ice cream sales are related to drowning deaths, but this is a classic confounding variable which we talked two tutorials ago, where temperature is the confounding factor for both of those. Scenario two, bi bi-directional, already talked about happiness and exercise. Let's plot and have a quick look at these, which I just plotted anyway. So if you look at the R value, you will get, uh, let's say for our ice cream drowning scenario, you get 0 0.9, which is actually a very strong correlation, which may indicate causation. Yeah, I'll talk about certain rules later on, but typically when you have very strong correlation, there is a possibility of causation. But in this case, it's basically the confounding variable, right? So you have to include that and you have to remove the effect of confounding variable. Watch again, second video in this mini series of correlation causation where we talked about uh, exactly that, uh, where you remove that and, and look at the residuals and see if these are still correlating. Yeah, and that's, uh, scenario one. Next one, I mean, obviously that scenario is summarized here. All the reds are higher temperature, all the blues are lower temperature, and you can see ice cream sales and drowning, they are linear and very strong correlated. But then if you see there is clear cluster here, clear cluster, cluster down here, that indicates that, okay, there is some sort of a confounding variable that's controlling these, this, uh, are affecting this relationship right here. Uh, as you know, we plot temperature versus ice cream sales and temperature versus drowning deaths. They are again, uh, kind of uh, highly correlated right there. Uh, if you look at exercise versus happiness, and again, uh, you may see a stronger R value. Again, this is R simulated, so not much uh, to this value, but this is a bi-directional causation. The thing I want you to appreciate is the complexity of answering this question uh, about whether exercise causes happiness or does happiness causes exercise. So that's a tough one. And random, sometimes you may see some, uh, some sort of a pattern right there. You may see a pattern right here. Maybe there is a relationship between one variable and other, but uh, it can be just mere coincidence in some cases. Let's uh, uh, look at, uh, then how do you actually, how do you, uh, you know, say that, okay, this is co correlated uh, or this is causing, you know, this correlation or, or this relationship, basically, well, one is a Bradford Hill criteria. There are a set of criteria to assess whether there is causality, right? So that's the uh, core point here. So some of the common guidelines is temporal sequence. The cause must come before the effect, okay? The cause must come before the effect. Strength, this can be a bit challenging. We just saw that stronger correlations suggest higher likelihood of causation. Again, likelihood, it doesn't say that, hey, it is, but higher likelihood. Consistency, the relationship is observed. This is probably a good one across multiple studies or settings. You know, in our case, if you have different types of penguins and if you're looking at the flipper length and body mass, and if that correlation holds up across all the species, probably there is a causation, um, a causality right there. 
Uh, biological plausibility, again, at the end of the day, it comes down to whether uh, you have the right domain knowledge to actually infer the causation. Like in this example, you need biological knowledge to see whether something aligns or scientific knowledge. Does it make sense from a biological or scientific point of view? And of course, there is support from controlled experiments. That's another uh, uh, you know, experimental evidence is another guideline, let's say, that uh, that infers causality. Um, there are certain studies, uh, you know, uh, uh, let, let, let me skip that part. And actually, I added a, a section down here that says uh, we are not that clearly I wanted to establish the fact that we are not establishing causation through formal test. There is nothing like uh, uh, Pearson or, you know, where you perform certain tests and plug the values in and you say, oh, okay, this is correlated with certain p-value. Uh, or this is, there is causation with certain p-value. Uh, there's nothing like that. We are basically exploring the correlation between penguin morphology features right now, exploring the correlation. And we are using causal thinking to ask a biological question, a plausible question. Does the heavier body mass lead to longer flippers? So these are the type of questions we're trying to answer. And uh, in the code, we are obviously using Penguin dataset like we have been using for the last three tutorials. We define a few scenarios, the causal scenarios based on the biological intuition that we have. And of course, we calculate Pearson correlation because we are the scenarios we are asking are between you know multiple uh, variables. So we need Pearson correlation to look at the R value, and if they are consistent across species, like uh, like we mentioned. So this is basically going back to this uh, Bradford Hill criteria. And uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, and we, of course we visualize these uh, relationships. Now this again important note. Uh, this is exploratory causal thinking. There is no proof of causation. So we do not manipulate any variables or control or confounders. Uh, the, basically, we are exploring the causation. Yeah. Uh, so we are reading our data from the Palmer penguin. Again, we did this in the last couple of tutorials. So not much to explain. And we have continuous variables, categorical variables. I literally copied paste from my last two tutorials ago to here. Uh, now to analyze the causation scenarios, let's actually create three scenarios. One is, does body mass cause longer flippers? So we have two variables here, body mass and flipper length. I just created dictionary. So by based on the scenario, we can read the right variables and calculate our Pearson. The reasoning here is heavier penguins, if they're heavy, they need longer flippers for, for swimming from a biological point of view. The next question is, does bill length determine the body mass. Again, the reasoning is larger penguins have proportionally longer bills, like higher mass proportionally longer bills is our reasoning. And do build dimensions trade off like length versus, you know, uh, uh, depth. Uh, again, bills shaped by feeding ecology constraints, meaning they must have a specific type of shape because they're feeding on certain type of fish, for example, which means the dimensions should trade off. If one goes up, the other one should go, go up, right? So that ratio probably should remain uh, a constant. That's again our reasoning. So based on that, we are actually plotting, uh, you know, calculating the R values and plotting this. And this part is just that. Not much code, as you can see. So now if we come down to the three questions we just posed or three scenarios, I should say. Uh, the, the R value here is uh, body mass versus flipper length, 0.873. That's like pretty high correlation, right? So uh, is it is it uh, causation? Consistency across species is very high. So probably it's, it's, it's a case for causality. Same for the next one and to build dimensions uh, trade off. In fact, the better question uh, way to look at this is by looking at these plots where each of these species is colored differently. And uh, you can see body mass and flipper length, uh, although this one is clustered here, you can see these two are mixed together. So in this case, there is some evidence right there of uh, one causing the other. Uh, because if the body mass goes up, probably the flip, flipper length goes up. Yeah. Uh, in this case, bill length and body mass, I see these three clusters 
and here also three uh, yeah, separate clusters. I don't see much of any uh, any uh, strong correlation, especially in this case, build depth and build length, as you can see. So probably there is no uh, there is no uh, you know causality case right there. So I added uh, I added some explanation you know, for our results. I know, uh, sorry for disappointing you if you are looking for some statistical tests that positively confirm causality from the correlation, but it has to go through specific steps. You, I mean, to establish causality, you have to go through specific steps. Uh, of course, looking at the correlation and uh, why is it, then you infer it. Then you have to infer based on various scenarios okay uh, why is it causing physical constraints of sw uh, of swimming mechanics you know so bigger body mass you cannot just have smaller flippers because you need to kind of obviously support that mass so uh, it's logical that heavier penguins need longer flippers so in this case you can establish that so it's all logic based as you can see there is no statistic uh, based uh, test that i'm showing you up here for all these scenarios now, uh, uh, again, uh, more explanation uh, up there. Now, ex if you look at the Bradford Hill criteria in our case, if you apply that, if you look at this, body mass and flipper growth occur together during development, and uh, the strength is very high. I mean, there is a temporal sequence. So one thing must happen before other. In this case, they both happen together. I cannot establish one happens before, right? Strength, very strong correlation, so that checks Consistency, it's high across all species, this relationship. And biological plausibility, like obviously swimming mechanics require this relationship like we just established. And it fits with biomechanical principles. So in this case, we can say, okay, there is a strong evidence for causation. If you look at weaker evidence, like build dimensions, these are weaker correlations. Both develop simultaneously, so you don't have much of a temporal. And experimental evidence would require manipulation studies. So it requires more studies to kind of establish that type of causation relationship right there. Okay, before ending this, uh, just a couple of takeaways. Uh, uh, I think uh, what I should mention is I just added some notes before this uh, video uh, recording this. Yeah, there is no single formal statistical test. Again, I want to emphasize that that can test uh, definitively, you know, prove causation. We can test statistically what the correlation is, like Pearson, Spearman's, and all these values. We did this in the last few tutorials. You can do regression models, like predict the effect of one variable on the other, uh, and you can do some statistical control, right? So covariances for regressions and so on, and you can do randomized control trials. But what helps you infer the causation, but again, does not prove outright that this is the causation, is of course looking at the Bradford Hill criteria, look at the strength, plausibility, consistency, and temporality, like one thing comes before the other, and uh, uh, primarily look at, look at these criteria. So uh, in, in summary, you can test for correlation, but this causation requires reasoning. It's not a statistical test. It requires reasoning, it requires designs and assumptions based on uh, uh, you know, what statistical tests alone can uh, basically provide. And at the end of the day, it requires domain expertise. It requires domain expertise. In this case, you gotta be an expert in penguins or birds, you know, to understand the surface area that's required to support certain type of mass. And uh, the, the, so, so this is, this is again, uh, outside of statistical concepts, but I, I, I contemplated about recording this video because I'm like, okay, there is no statistical test I'm gonna show, but I thought it's very important for, for, for my audience and for you guys who probably watched the first three statistical tests to know the importance of uh, you know, the causality and how uh, correlation does not mean causation. I hope you enjoyed this mini series. Keep watching in the next tutorial, we'll do a mini project. I believe uh, to apply some of the statistical concepts we learned until now. So if you're looking for some sort of a project, maybe that one uh, uh, you know, excites you. So please come back. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thank you very much.